evening, and welcome to This Week in Paranormal, your half-hour dive into the mysterious, the unexplained, and otherworldly. Well, it might go longer than half an hour, probably. I'm Sean White, your guide to the latest and strange in all things paranormal. We cover ghost encounters, UFO sightings, ancient mysteries, modern-day miracles, and we check out recent uh, paranormal videos and also broadcasts around the internet. All links will be in the description below. Also, uh, if you're here, uh, please help us out. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. And, and if you're new, trust us, you'll, it will be well worth it if you give us a thumbs up. Watching later. Thank you. We appreciate it. How you doing, Welcome, Chad? Welcome, everybody. I'm doing good. All I'm right. eager. You're eager? Hey, that's hopefully everyone else out there is also eager. And uh, thank you um, for everyone joining us. Uh, I guess it's about that time. For those of you that uh, have been around us, around my shows for a while, it's about that time, which we have a toast. It is Thursday evening, dangerously close to the weekend, and uh, to a great show. Oh, wait. Cheers, oh, everybody. Cheers. If we ever get big enough, maybe I'll get a sponsorship someday. Or we'll get <laughs> <laughs> That would be something. Yeah, right. That really would be something. Well, well, well. What are you? There are two. Yeah, there are two. Look. There's two. Yeah, look further up. The yeah, side. you're right. There are two. Are these like? There's three. Look. There's four. What the hell is going on? Hi. Oh, this is this is crazy and awesome. Hard to no, see. Only in different shapes. Watch your language, Giros. Sorry. Sometimes I can't keep us on the music. What are these? Don't know. What's that one? Ooh. Some are circles. Some are, are these alien pods? What are these? Fascinating. Damn, what is this? Hey, come on. Good dog. Come on. That was a good dog. Real quick, uh, do you remember uh, about what what happened when you were in the pool area of, of the the Queen Mary? Yeah, I mean, uh, so that particular instance when I was investigating with uh, Ghost Adventures, I mean, I had seen this shadow figure in the pool area for a, a really long time. Um, hi, thank you. That was a very kind comment. Um, and I, I had seen him since I was a little girl, so probably. I don't know, eight or nine, I had started seeing him and I called him the shadow man. Um, he lingers. He was very creepy. Um, kind of hung out in the dressing room area. He doesn't like me. I don't like him. That's very, about as far as our mutual interests go. And um, just that night, um, the pool area, for anyone who's been there, it's normally super low lighting. I actually just saw a picture of it recently and they, I guess, changed the light bulbs or something. It's like really bright. I'm like, okay, why couldn't that have 
why couldn't you guys have done that then? Um, because with the Shadow Man, um, he kind of just hung out in the back of the Valeria in very low lighting, uh, like I said. Um, and that night uh, with Ghost Adventures was the first time it was pitch black. And um, when I say it was like a completely different beast, it was. It was like this entity fed off of the darkness in the room oh, and wow. so i wanted to say like it sounds kind of weird but it was like i could see him in multiple places at once um which doesn't make sense to me to this day so if anyone wants me to explain that i wish i could um and so i wanted to say like this is the shadow man and every time i went to go see that i would feel like i was mm. going to cry so I never got the chance to say it. And actually, he was on the upper right-hand balcony, if you're facing the pool area. And mm -hmm. Zach actually got rushed by a ghost. My mom heard the footsteps running at him. So it oh, kind wow. of confirmed that he was there, but I never actually got to voice that. And then shortly after, we went to the pool area with our friend, um, who's Aaron Goodwin's sister, Amy Goodwin. Mm -hmm. And it was my first time back in the pool area after that investigation. And I just felt like if we stayed there, something bad was going to happen. So it, it kind right. of sent me into a panic because, I don't know, it was like he had some type of hold over me. No, oh, wow. And so, yeah, I really Freaky. don't go in the pool area after that just because... The, 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 other, the yeah, reason I'll go though, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. One of the, the reasons I ask is we that kind of stuck out in my mind um, when I was watching that because uh, we had Brandon Alvis on the show, mm -hmm. and he, the way he explained it was he gave somebody that was with him a camera, and they weren't really paying attention. They were just kind of walking around doing one of these, and years later he was going through the footage, and he has a. a a picture of an apparition well, you go you deal with a person that's got demons a person's demon possessed and um a lot of times that person there's there well not a lot of times if they got a demon there's a legal right for it to be there and um there's a there will be a a you know that, that legal right and there will be like a stronghold there's something the demon is using to basically try to keep itself there in their life and uh, they always say, I'm not leaving. I've been here too long. That's that I've heard that a million times, not a million, literally, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, you know, yeah, figure of speech, but I mean, I've heard that a lot. I've been here too long. I'm not leaving. It doesn't matter. You're still leaving, you know, but you have that authority to pull down those strongholds and you can renounce, you know, you, you basically interrogate the demon, you find out why it's there. And a lot of times when the person sits down and talks to you, you'll figure it out before the, you even start casting them out. You know, God will start showing you things, but, um, you're pulling down that stronghold. And when you're pulling that down, now that person can be delivered, you know, and you know, the Bible, uh, talks about the keys to the kingdom. Uh, Jesus said, I've given you, given you the keys to the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So what that means, you know, a lot of people in the church don't like what I say. Oh, he talks about binding demons, blah, blah, blah. They don't like it. It's like, yeah, because you don't read your Bible. You don't want anything to do with the keys to the kingdom because Jesus said he's given us those keys and those keys, because of him giving us those keys, we can bind and loose. So you can bind. And when you bind in Jesus name, a demon, you're, there's agreement in heaven with what you just did. And there's power and there's authority behind it. If you loose a person from bondage, from demonic possession, whatever, you lose them. There's agreement in heaven with what you just did. There, there's authority in that. So, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm skeptical of the Christians that go through life happy, clappy, and uh, all, all days he eat living on easy street because I that's not what I've experienced. And, um, you know, that's, I know a lot of, you know, a lot of great Christians over the years that were very strong and they had attacks a lot of attacks, you know, and the more they prayed because they, 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 they helped others by, with their prayers and they were prayer warriors, they got attacked mm -hmm. and they accepted it. You know, that's like, that's life. And, and, uh, I'm not going to back down, you know, and that's well, the he, attitude we're supposed not, to have. Yeah. Not to interrupt you, but I mean, mm -hmm. you got to think the more we are on the side of the world, we are more on the side of Satan. That's right. Because Satan is over the world right now. That so, is right. If you're doing his bidding and agreeing with everything that comes in front of your face, 
Mm -hmm. Why is he going to mess with you? Well, you know what? Here's what here's what I think is sad. People that actually try to help others, that actually try to try to help others and do spiritual warfare, they can be attacked way more than they would have been, you know, 50 years ago or something. And the reason why is, I hate to say it, I wish it wasn't true, but it is true. The church has cooled off. The church is not on fire for God anymore. The church is about entertaining people. Um, and so Satan's like, I got the church. They're no threat to me. They are no threat. Their prayers are weak. I own these people. Our special segment for tonight has to do with another UFO cover-up. In March 2024, the Department of Defense's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO, released a groundbreaking report that comprehensively reviews nearly eight decades of U.S. government and military encounters with unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP. It's not preferred over UFOs. The 63-page 63, the 63 report represents an unprecedented effort by the U.S. military to address a topic that has long been shrouded in mystery, speculation, and often skepticism. The report's release has caused more controversial accusations of another government cover-up in response to the recent UAP disclosure. That indicates the opposite. The investigation has given no real credence to previous testimony. Will science is always looking to explain things with a body of evidence that is empirical in nature. The lack of empirical evidence seems to be the excuse to take the position claimed in the report. Key highlights for the Department of Defense UAP report. A AARO's report delves into historical records and U.S. since 1945, the government has been diligently implementing programs specifically designed to delve into the realm of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP. The primary aim of these initiatives is to meticulously investigate and gain comprehensive insights into our nation's intriguing encounters with these extraordinary phenomena. In a statement released on March 8, 2024, the Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder said the following in the release. To date, AARO has found no verifiable evidence for claims that the U.S. government and private companies have access to or have been reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. Also, AARO has found no evidence that any U.S. government investigation, academic sponsored research, or official review panel has confirmed that any sighting of a UAP represented extraterrestrial technology. All investigative efforts at all levels of classification conclude that most sightings were ordinary objects and phenomena and the result of misidentification. AARO assesses that all of the named and described alleged hidden UAP reverse engineering programs provided by interviewees either do not exist or misidentified authentic national security programs that are not related to extraterrestrial technology exploitation or resolve to a disestablished program. The report unequivocally states there is no verifiable evidence that any UAP sighting is linked to extraterrestrial technology or that the US government or private entities have ever accessed such technology. The finding challenges a core belief held by many in the UAP community about the government's possession of alien technology. What has caused further controversy is not only what is in the report, but when you read the above statement, you can quickly read between the lines. What is not being admitted to could be construed as not admitting it, but also not claiming it does not exist. The words are chosen carefully, and as an example, no verifiable evidence can be understood in more than one way. And it does not seem to be a blatant denial, yet the investigations in the report remain questionable. Government UAP programs. The investigation also looked into claims of secret government programs dealing with UAPs that were not reported to Congress. It concluded that such programs, if they ever existed, were likely misidentified projects unrelated to extraterrestrial technology. Public safety and health implications. Reflecting on the safety concerns, the report acknowledges the flight risk posed by UAPs, but states there have been no known collisions. It also notes the potential health implications of UAP encounters though no direct adverse effects have been confirmed. Increased UAP reporting. The report notes an uptick in UAP reporting, attributing it to the reduction of stigma around the top and the establishment of formalized reporting mechanisms by military personnel. The report's release has not, has not quelled the controversy, but rather stoked the flames of an ongoing debate regarding the nature of UAPs and how the government handles their investigation. Critics argue that the report's dismissive tone towards the possibility of extraterrestrial origins for some UAP sightings does not align with numerous credible reports from military 
personnel and pilots. They also contend that the report's findings seem to preclude, without sufficient justification, the possibility of non-human technology being observed in our airspace. Our ghost conference segment for tonight is Haunted America Conference in Alton, Illinois. It runs from today until Sunday this week. Join us for our 27th year. The Haunted America Conference online registration is closed. Limited spots available at the door June 21st. It comes at Lewis and Clark College in Alton and Godfrey, Illinois. The biggest and best and original ghost conference in America returns in 2024 for our spectacular summer event. New and returning speakers on ghosts, hauntings, the paranormal, and the unexplained. Plus, how-to workshops, special events, haunted tours, and much more. Don't miss the supernatural event of 2024. New and returning are the Traveling Museum of M- Memento Mori. Also, the Singular 14 Society and a haunting in Blue Hill. Speakers include Troy Taylor, Amanda Woomer, Chad Lewis, and Jim Willis. This has been a CARC Universal production.